Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video with the Mini Cooper. Uh, in this video, as the title suggests, we are going to be fitting a dash cam uh, into the windscreen of the car. It's going to sit up around here, just in front of the mirror, um, just like so. Um, but what we need to do is obviously we want to wire it in so that it will turn on, start recording uh, as soon as the ignition is switched. In order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use a uh, hardware kit. Uh, these are uh, easily available on eBay. Um, this is a next base camera, but you don't need to use a next base uh, wiring kit. This is basically a clone of, of the next base kit, but a lot cheaper. What I'll do, I'll leave the uh, link to this in the description so you can go and have a look. Um, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to show how to uh, wire it all in um, safely and securely so that it turns on with ignition. Thanks for stopping by, let's dig into it. Okay, so to start, what we obviously need to do is we need to identify exactly where the camera is going to go. And it's going to sit right here so that it's behind the uh, behind the wind, um, the rear view mirror. That way, it you know, it won't distract the driver. You won't, you won't be able to really notice it's even there, to be perfectly honest. And it's a nice little position to have it just there. Um, obviously, once we've identified exactly where it's going to go, we can then uh, work out how we're going to route the wiring. Now... This wiring will go down to the fuse box, which is down here in this kick panel. We'll have a look at that um, in a moment. Um, but what we need to do is hide all this wiring um, behind all the trims uh, and inside the roof. Uh, as you can see, the roof panel um, is quite flexible and you can get your fingers in inside. Uh, and obviously we could tuck the wiring in. The, uh, the trims here, again, um, we can get the, the wiring in behind them quite easily by pulling the, ew, it's a bit bit gammy behind there. I'll give that a clean up before I put it back together. But as you can see, there's a nice gap here. We can get the wiring in all the way up the A-pillar uh, trim and into the roof. We need to come down here to the fuse box in the uh, in the kick panel. Um, but to get the wiring into there, we, what we can do is we can remove this little panel as well. Pop that out. As you can see, it's got two little tangs there. Don't just rip it out because you will break these off. And um, it kind of goes like that and then out, if you get what I mean, you can see. Um, and yeah, we, we've got loads of room. We've got loads of room to put the any excess cable as well in here. Uh, and yeah, we just need to route it all the way down here, down into the fuse panel. So what we'll do, we'll uh, we'll get started. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll start up at this end, start routing it down, and then we'll get to the fuse box um, once, we've, uh, once we've achieved that. Okay, so the kit itself, um, we open up the little bag and pull everything out. There's quite a lot in here. Um, there's, even an, there's even an instruction kit, uh, an instruction manual um, as well. You've got a couple of fuses. These are three amp fuses. These are the fuses that will protect this cabling um, once, uh, once it's installed. As you can see, there's two sizes. Now, the reason for that is because we've got two different ends. So these terminals, what they're going to do is these are going to basically end in the fuse box. Um, I'll explain how in a moment, uh, but we've got two different sizes. Now this um, is to fit different cars. Uh, some will have this type and some will have this type. I'm not sure which ones we've got in here yet, but obviously it'll become apparent once we take the cover off and have a look. And we will just basically use whichever one we need to use in order to uh, in order to fit the uh, in order to fit the device. Um, yeah, it's basically just a fly-in lead. And as you can see, it will just connect into there, just like so. And then you just slide the uh, the protective sheath over it to uh, to protect it from uh, obviously getting in contact with any other metal parts of the of the vehicle. Now here we also have. I'm going to pull these apart a little bit. We've got a little. Uh, we've got a little terminal. Now that is a ground. So what we need to do is once as a part of the process of routing this cable. That bit needs to go down towards a fuse box and this needs to be terminated at ground. So here, we've got some really perfect grounds really. These bolts here are um, bolt the chassis, uh, sorry, the dashboard to the chassis. If we pop one of them out um, and, and put that behind it, it will ground perfectly at that point. Um, 
So yeah, that's uh, that's what we need to do with that. And then obviously this is the, the end that goes into the camera, just there like so. And obviously provide power to the, uh, to the camera. So if we undo this, right now, there's gonna be more than enough cable here um, to, to reach up to where we need it to be. Um, a bit tangled, let's untangle it a little bit. Yeah, in typical, typical tangle fashion. Right, there we go. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, we've got more than enough cable to get from this fuse box down here up to this point. So we will have a bit of excess and all I'll do is we'll just simply fold it up, put the, uh, put the little tie around it and then it will just sit in this gap here um, out of the way um, and, and it will look nice and tidy. Right then, let's, uh, let's start by routing this cable from here down the A pillar into the fuse box. Okay, so let's start by uh, routing the cable, but let's pull this seal out a bit more. And then obviously we've got really good access into the A pillar. Obviously when you put this back on, just make sure it's pushed right back up onto this, onto this ridge, otherwise um, the door won't shut properly um, and obviously the window won't make a seal against the, uh, against the seal. Um, so what we need to do is tuck this in. And I'm just tucking it in inside the pillar, cut uh, the, the A pillar trim as best I can. Obviously, you've got to be careful with the, these pillar trims, otherwise, they can uh, obviously break, little tangs break off and what have you. Uh, I think I've got it about right there. And then all I need to do is just tuck that up inside the roof. Obviously, if you've got dirty fingers, um, just be careful that you don't um, get your dirty fingers all over the roof because otherwise it will look horrible. And tuck it all in. Just like so. And there we are, we've got it hanging down in a perfect position to plug into the camera. So let's get the other end here. Now what we've got to try and do is we've got to get it into this little box down here. But obviously we don't want to interfere with the actual cover either. So if we, again, move a bit more of the seal out of the way. In fact, I can actually now start to push this back into place because we've finished up here now. Okay, so now what we need to do is take the black and red cable. And then this is gonna feed down towards the fuse box. Again, like I said before, the black one has got to uh, go to ground. Now, having thought about it, there's another little torch screw here, which is probably a better size for this connector. So I'm actually gonna probably just undo that one ever so slightly. Um, it only has to come out a little bit just to be able to get this behind and then retighten it. Uh, Cause that bolt's probably quite wide. I'm not sure that this will fit behind it, but yeah, that looks promising. So we'll use that. And then this red one can then continue down towards the fuse box. So what I'll do, I'll go grab some uh, tools. It's a Torx bit head. Uh, just, um, I'll just slacken that off and we'll get this, uh, this fitted in and uh, tightened up. Okay, this screw is a T20. So I've got a T20 Torx bit. And all I'm gonna do is just loosen it. It doesn't need to come all the way out. All I've got to do is pull it out enough for that little, that little terminal to get behind. A little bit awkward. There's not a great deal of room in here, but we'll manage. I think that'll probably do it. Yeah. Okay. I can see the the washer is now loose. 
So if I take my little black, my little black one, and just tuck it in behind, as you can see, it fits perfectly behind that screw. And then all I've got to do now is just nip it up. Make it nice and tight so that we've got a good ground for the camera. And there we go, nice and tight. Right then, what we've got to do now is we've got to run this red one down to the fuse box. So that needs to go like down that way. But the rest of this is basically excess cable. So what I'll do is tidy all of this up. Just basically just need to, you know, tidy it all up like that, put another tie wrap around it so that it's nice and tidy. So I'll get on with that and then you'll bring it back in and then we'll start moving on with the positive lead. Okay, so quite happy that that's all neat and tidy yep, up in there and that'll all be good. What we need to do now is obviously run this one down here. So the fuse box is down here. We'll, we'll have a little bit more of a detailed look at the fuse box in a moment. But all I want to do is I need to get this down here and basically coming out in this kind of area. So it's going to be a little bit of uh, messing around of that, I've got no doubt, um, to get it to get it to go where I want it to go, but um, we'll manage. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll root it down here, have a bit of a mess around, because it's probably gonna take me about five or 10 minutes to get it where I need it to go. And then uh, obviously I'll bring it back in once we've got it towards the, uh, towards the fuse box and coming out of this area. I'll see you in a sec. And there we are, as you can see, we've now got it coming out where the fuses are. Um, it was a bit of a pain to get it in there because I had to, a tiny little gap that I had to feed it down through and then another gap to get it up to come out this way. And it was a little bit fiddly. It took me about five minutes, but we got there in the end. Now, obviously what we need to do now is we need to get one of these um, and connect it together because it's gonna go into the fuse box. Now this one is redundant. This is the wrong size for this car. Um, we need this, the, the larger of the two for the Mini. So, <clears throat> what we need to do is, um, of all these fuses in here, we need to find one that is um, switched, uh, a, sw a switch live. Some of these will be live all the time, quite a lot of them, believe it or not, will be live all the time. Like the horn, for example, if we press the horn, it'll beep. Um, and that's with the ignition off. So the horn is a permanent live, and obviously we don't want to use a permanent live because that means that the camera will be on all the time. Um, what I believe will be a switch live is the rear washer. Uh, the rear washer is a switch live, I'm, I'm led to believe. Now, that'll be a 5 amp fuse, uh, which is just above the 20 amp fuse for the heated seats. So, this yellow one here is the 20 amp. That 5 amp one there, just above it, is the, is the one we're looking at for the rear wash wipe. Now, just at the bottom here, it's a little set of um, fuse pliers, and you can use them to pull the fuses out like and just like so uh, quite quite simply um fit and remove uh make it, it just makes your life easier having this because you can't quite get your fingers in there what we need to do is we need to check that that is um going to be on and off as you know depending upon the position of the key so what i'll do i'll go grab my multimeter and we'll give it a quick test okay let's switch the uh, the multimeter to dc volts in the 20 range what we're going to do is all i'm going to do uh, is just at the top of the fuse you can see there's like a little open bit you can actually get the uh, the probe in there and all i'm going to do is i'm going to touch the whoops touch the negative probe let me stand that up so we can see what's going off uh, touch the negative probe against a, a ground now there's a perfect ground just here there's a little bolt on the door hinge that'll be absolutely fine uh, and as you can see right now zero volts if we turn the uh, the ignition on that should go up to at or around 12 volts 
And there we are. So um, if we turn it off again, we can see it goes back down to zero again. So we know that that is a switch live. So we've got the right one. Um, so we're gonna take my little pliers and uh, pull that fuse up. So don't throw the fuse away because we will be needing it momentarily. Okay. So on here, as you can see, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fit this into there. You can fit it in in either orientation, depending upon, you know, um, the, the, the way the, the fuse box is configured and the slot that's available. If I put it in that way, I'm not gonna be able to get the door on because it will be interfere with a little catch. But I could put it in that way, absolutely fine. Obviously, if I was using a fuse on that side, we might be able to get away with it that way. But, but yeah, I'm gonna insert mine in that orientation. But what we need to do is we need to fit the original fuse for the rear wash wipe into the lower of the two fuse holes. Now, this lower one um, is basically a straight bridge between the two pins, whereas the upper one goes off up this cable here. So make sure we put the original fuse back into the lower of the two. Then we take the other fuse um, that came in the pack, which is a three amp fuse for the camera, and we fit that one into the top slot, which is easier said than done. Get in there, just like that. Okay, so we should have two fuses in there. And there we are, that's, uh, that's it. So what we need to do now is connect the connectors like, just like that, and then pop the plastic sleeve over the top just like that and then that protects it from touching anything that it shouldn't and then all we need to do is pop that into the fuse um, slot that the original fuse came out of and then the cable can simply be tucked in or you could pull the excess back up uh, and in your stowage if you needed to but there we go let's put our little little fuse pliers back in there and, and that is that. We can now put the cover back on. And that is the job. Pretty much done. Now, as I said, we don't need this bit. We can put that back in the little bag or put it away somewhere in case we need it in the future. Um, we need to put the trim back on here on the outside. So I'll fit that back in just like so. Nice and easy. And you'd never know. Then, obviously, we've got to put the uh, weather seal back in where it's supposed to be, making sure it's fitted properly and that it will allow the door to shut. There we go. Okay. Now, what we need to do next is obviously mount the camera up on the windscreen. So if I moisten the little sucker pad, pop this open, stick it up in place and then close that and then what we need to do is oops let's moisten it a bit better there we go right oh she doesn't want to stay on there there we go that's, that's better right then what we've got to do now is plug in the cable and now when we turn the ignition on the camera should also fire into life and there we go as you can see we can see down the driveway the camera is working if we turn the ignition off moment after a couple of seconds there we go the camera is off so we know we've got it working and that is the job done it really was uh, pretty straightforward not too difficult at all um bit of a uh, little bit of messing around with trims and what have you but the actual the actual wiring of this was so so simple um and that's the beauty of these little hardware kits as i said i will leave a link in the description below so that you can go and have a look at it yourself uh, and, and get one if you wish anyway guys hopefully you uh you found this video useful entertaining and uh, you enjoyed it if you did leave a like don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all again for the very next video. Take care, guys. Bye-bye now.